there are three main different types of qualitative research studies. Um, the one of which is called an ethnographic study or sometimes referred to as ethnography. So this video is going to go over very briefly some key points. There's no way we can cover everything you need to know with ethnography in one recording. Therefore, you do need to read your textbook. But this is just going to give you kind of the main key points to look at. So the purpose of an ethnographic study is to understand cultures. Um, ethnographies came from the um, discipline of anthropology, which is the studies of cultures and cultural life ways and patterns. And so it's important to understand that a culture can be defined in many different ways. Basically, a culture is inferred from shared ideals, actions, products, language, etc. But we can define, and researchers often do define cultures in different ways. Sometimes cultures are a specific geographic area, such as maybe people who live in the Appalachian region in maybe Kentucky and Tennessee, West Virginia. But sometimes it's very specific to different focused groups. So I've actually read ethnographic studies that considered correctional nurses as a culture. So they wanted to look at what is it like to work in a correctional institution as a healthcare provider, and how did those incarcerated individuals interact with healthcare um, disciplines within that institutionalized environment. So we kind of the sky's the limit as to how we define culture, but the purpose of an ethnographic study is to understand how cultural groups and healthcare, specifically nurses, merge together and help each other with um, understanding what health means to those individuals. Um, so what we're looking for through an ethnography is to get an insider's perspective. If you don't know anything about a culture, there's no way that you're going to go in for a week and figure everything out. You're an outsider. So to assume that you're gonna figure it all out in a short period of time is bonkers. You're not gonna do that. So there's, your book talks about the difference between the etic and the emic perspectives. The etic is the outsider, like what you start off as when you're studying a new culture. So in order to get to the insider's perspective, you have to fully immerse yourself in the day-to-day -day activities of that cultural group. So if I were studying correctional nurses as a culture, and I've never practiced as a correctional nurse, I would actually have to go to work many, 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 many shifts, do their work, interact with the prisoners, understand the unique nuances of what it is to practice in that environment. Um, you're not going to do that in a brief time, nor are you going to do that by sitting there with a clipboard and a tape recorder. You have to be a participant in the work that happens there. So you'll see that the main way that we get information to inf our data for our study is by observation. So we, first of all, start kind of disconnected, looking, trying to figure everything out. But slowly and surely, we're actually incorporated into that group. And they allow us to participate in their rituals and in their day-to-day -day activities. And through that participation, we understand a little bit more about what that insider's perspective would be. And that allows us to have a holistic picture of that culture under study and specifically how it interacts with healthcare and nursing so that we can make improvements in the health disparities for that particular culture. So how do we even find people in cultures to be in our study? Um, if you're a newbie to a culture, you're not just gonna go walk in as an outsider and be able to get open access, everyone, everything, every building. So you start off kind of casting a big net as you see on the slide. You just mingle with people, let them know you're there, make sure that they know that you're like, you're there, you're engaged, you're not trying to spy on them. You are truly uniquely um, interested in what's going on so that you can understand how nurses could better help them in their cultural group. So typically you're talking to 25 to 50 people mingling informally. Eventually you're gonna kind of open the door, kind of behind the curtain, if you will, figure out who those important people are that you need to meet. You know, if you go to work in a new hospital, it's almost like a cultural group that you don't know. 
So you don't start off on the first day sitting across the desk from the CEO. You may never actually sit across the desk from the CEO. But as you work your way up and you've been there for a long time, you get to sit at the table with more and more important people who can really show you the inner workings of that hospital environment. It's the same kind of concept with a cultural group. You want to find those key leaders. They don't necessarily have to be the chief or the president or the mayor or whatever that group calls their key leaders, but it's gonna be the people who are in the know and who have the information that you need to glean an understanding of this cultural group. Um, also, as you see, this is unique. They also sample things, so maybe artifacts. They sometimes look at the art and the poetry and the music and the foods and of, of that culture and see how that shapes who they are and what they need from us as nurses. And so you don't just talk to people, you don't just observe people, but you look at the things. You look at their homes, you look at their churches, you look at their schools, at their public marketplaces. What does it look like to be in this culture and to live day to day in this cultural group? So I have two examples. This first one is more of a traditional way of thinking about cultures. It's a Western Australian Aboriginal group, and they wanted to look at how did those individuals view palliative care? You know, we're trying to promote palliative care for those who cannot have curative care, but it's, we don't necessarily understand how different cultures perceive palliative care. So this researcher specifically went about trying to figure that out so that we can promote health and well-being across the lifespan, even into death in the latter stages of life. This one is also kind of a traditional geographical ethnographic study. They were looking at rural South, so that could be us in Louisiana. They don't really tell us in this abstract where the rural South is, but it was here in the United States. And they were specifically looking at what it was like to be a woman living in the rural South who was trying to raise her family, provide for her family, while also having a clinical diagnosis of depression. And what was that like for them to live that through, with that every day while still being expected to perform in all of their roles that they had to um, achieve throughout their days? So that's an, another interesting view. There are countless other examples I could show you, but that's enough. So it gives you a good idea that this is totally different than quantitative research. You know, we're not giving people surveys. We're not looking at very specific little minute details of human existence. Instead, we're immersing ourselves in a cultural group. And we're trying to understand the inner workings of that group with all kinds of different data. People, stories, looking at things, places, and really participating in the process to understand the inner workings. So it's interesting. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this little view of ethnographic nursing research.